God make you kill me, man. Now we can kill the whole family to die, bitch. No, Take your punk ass to sleep, sir. Okay? Because I'm sure I'm not your sir. Until you fix my shit, you leave me, man. Thank you, sir. You better believe that. Fuck your skin. It's the spirit within. Anybody in the right man. You win us to let color, you ain't got to worry about it. But if you don't have that other shit, you're going to pull it out the ass. Deal with it.
in good to go need a mic check everything's good check 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 So we ready? We ready? We ready? All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for coming to our center, the United Players Youth Center, where our organization, United Players, is here to help curb the violence and stop the violence. Our organization, United Players, has been here for 27 years now, helping to combat against sexless gun violence. Me being somebody who's been on both sides of the gun less than 10 years ago, me and a couple of my friends were right here, were survivors of gun violence. And so I'm very adamant and serious about when it comes to gun violence and these ghost guns that we need to get rid of. I was proud to stand with District Attorney Chester Bodine and announce the litigation against gun ghost guns that were manufactured and I'm honored to stand here with our Attorney General Rob Bonta to let everybody know that this right here is something that we're not going to tolerate. So we're making an announcement today, me and all of our partners here, Maddie Scott, the Brady Campaign, Moms of Man Action, all of us right here just to make sure that we continue to make sure that we bring light. So I want to thank you to our AG, Attorney General Bonta, and our DA, District Attorney Bodine, for taking on this fight for all of us. I now will turn it over to our Attorney General, Rob Bonta. Thank you.
Good morning, Rob Bonta, California Attorney General. Good to be with you today, and I just want to start off by thanking Rudy um, for your, your, your passion, your commitment, your partnership, your friendship, uh, your commitment to the community and to public safety and to lifting uh, folks up. For, uh, thanks for hosting us today for the critical work United Playas leads to empower our most at-risk youth and for working with them to prevent senseless gun violence on our streets and in our classrooms. And let me just say good morning to everyone and thank you for joining us here today. And uh, we're, one of the things that I think is very important about today is what you see on full display, which is our collaboration, our cooperation, our teamwork. That's how you get big things done. So I'm very appreciative of this team. I want to shout out and thank San Francisco District Attorney Chesa Boudin uh, for your leadership, your friendship, your partnership on this very critical issue. Travis Silva and the Kecker and Van Ness firm. Travis is an associate at Kecker. And let me take a point of personal privilege to say I was an associate at that firm when I started my legal career. Uh, one of the best firms in the state and in the nation. And I'm proud of the work that they do and have done uh, for the people of the state. Uh, Esther Sanchez Gomez, litigation attorney, Giffords Law Center to prevent gun violence. Thank you for your work and partnership. Maddie Scott, who you'll hear from later, President Brady United Against Gun Violence, California, and Dr. Rebecca Plevin, assistant professor of surgery, trauma, and surgical critical care at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital and director of San Francisco Wraparound Project. And let me also acknowledge um, some of my team members who were instrumental in getting us to this point today. Um, we have Vesna Chuk, Deputy Attorney General, Rose Carmen Goldberg, Deputy Attorney General, Michael Elisafin, Supervising Deputy Attorney General, Nick Akers, Senior Assistant Attorney General, and Michael Redding, my Special Assistant Attorney General. And let me just say, uh, start by uh, with these comments. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. That is as little as it can take to put together. And we're not talking about a kit of Legos, not talking about Blue Apron or Martha Stewart's meal kit. We're not talking about an at-home COVID test. We're talking about a ghost gun kit. 15 minutes and you have a lethal weapon, and that's all it can take. Right now across the nation and across California, ghost gun kits are being purchased, sent in the mail, or even scheduled for in-store pickup. What is delivered is a package of assembled parts that, in just a few minutes of work, uh, create a fully deadly, untraceable ghost gun. These weapons have been used in mass shootings. Criminals have used them to murder innocent children in our classrooms. They have been linked to serious crimes here in San Francisco and across the nation. In America, we have a gun problem. We have to own that and acknowledge that. We have a ghost gun problem, and we here and I am taking action in response to that problem. That's why today we are announcing a lawsuit against three ghost gun kit manufacturers and retailers, Black Hawk Manufacturing Group, MDX Corporation, and GS Performance LLC, commonly known as Glock Store. Gun kits sold by each of these three retailers can be used to self-assemble deadly, unserialized, largely untraceable guns that fail to meet California firearms safety standards, allowing anyone from terrorists to human traffickers to bypass California's nation-leading gun laws, including registration and background checks, and within minutes have an instrument of death in their hands. This industry will become more dangerous if it is not properly regulated. When firearms are built at home by individuals who have not passed a background check and have not had their guns properly serialized, it leaves, a law, it leaves law enforcement in the dark and it leaves all of us less safe. So today's action builds on years of work to keep Californians safe. Beginning in 2019, the California DOJ began investigating Glock Store, a company based in San Diego and Tennessee that sells firearms and ghost gun kits. Today's filing, which amends a lawsuit filed in August by the San Francisco District Attorney and is related to my office's investigation, is another tool to pursue Glock Store and the other ghost gun retailers and combat the supply of these firearms. Our lawsuit alleges that Blackhawk, MDX, and Glock Store are breaking the law. First, that they are evading the assembly of firearms law, which requires consumers who purchase a frame or receiver and assemble the firearm to apply to the California Department of Justice 
for a serial number and a background check. We allege that all three companies are undermining and evading this law. We assert they are employing a false and deceptive advertising practice by leading buyers to believe that the frames and receivers purchased in gun kits are legal without explaining the serious legal requirements for assembling them into firearms. Second, our lawsuit alleges that the business practices of these three companies are unlawful, unfair, fraudulent, and in violation of the California Unsafe Handgun Act. The companies do not disclose to gun kit buyers that the law which requires handguns to meet basic safety requirements, including passing, firing, and drop safety tests, applies to ghost gun kit buyers, and that the handgun kits that they were selling do not meet these standards. Third, we allege all three companies violated the Federal Gun Control Act by exploiting a perceived federal loophole with respect to ghost gun kits and failing to comply with firearm sales and serialization requirements. And fourth, we assert that Blackhawk and Glock Store are violating the California manufacturer of firearms law by failing to comply with the requirements that uh, the requirement that manufacturers engrave all frame and receiver blanks with a unique serial number. As firearm-related deaths and injuries rise and become a public health and safety issue here and throughout the country, we have to use every tool that we have, including today's action, to keep the public safe. I'm committed to keeping every Californian safe, and I'm doing that by enforcing and defending our state's common sense gun laws. Gun violence, I've said it time and time again, is an American disease, unique to America. Every day, more than 100 people are shot and killed. Statistically, nearly, nearly every person in this space that we're sharing today uh, and those watching this on the news will know at least one victim of gun violence in their lifetime. I, I just a tragic statistic. So we are here today to take action to ensure sensible, common sense gun safety to protect our children, our loved ones, and our communities from preventable and indiscriminate gun violence. Proud to work with this great team. And with that, let me turn it over to San Francisco District Attorney Chesa Boudin. Right now. Thank you so much, Attorney General Bonta, for your words, for your leadership, and for your dedication to this critical public safety issue. I also want to thank everyone for being here today to help raise awareness about a true epidemic of gun violence in our communities and about the important work we are doing as a team to fight back. As the Attorney General said, this pressing issue requires all of our best efforts. It requires all of our collaboration and teamwork to succeed, to save lives. I couldn't be more honored to stand here today with this amazing group of folks, the Attorney General but also, of course, with many of the finest lawyers in the country focusing on this issue. The trial lawyers at the Kecker and Van Ness Law Firm and the phenomenal litigation team from the Giffords Law Center to prevent gun violence, as well as all of the other community partners like the Brady United Against Gun Violence group that does so much to raise awareness and fight back against the tragic impact of gun violence in our communities. As San Francisco District Attorney, my priority is and always will be public safety. And we know that in this day and age, there is nothing that presents a graver threat to public safety than guns, specifically unserialized ghost guns that are being dumped into our communities and into the hands of people who are prohibited from possessing firearms, from people who intend to use those firearms to commit crimes, whose very possession of those firearms is a crime. Now, on August 18th, 2021, we filed this bold lawsuit attempting to take the fight to the root of the problem, attempting to prevent these three manufacturers from continuing to produce and dump guns onto our streets. The very next day, one of those manufacturers changed their website and announced that they were not shipping guns into California anymore. So we see the power of litigation. We see the power of the Attorney General's investigation into that manufacturer. And it has already been felt by those whose lives have been saved. Unnamed, unknown lives that have been saved because of our collaboration, the Attorney General's investigation, and because of our courageous partnership in filing this lawsuit. Now today I am so proud and humbled to have the addition of a critical ally in this fight with the Attorney General's litigation team, 
we have the firepower we need to win this war against gun violence. Let's be clear. Gun violence is a crisis in San Francisco, in California, and across the country. Gun violence has been on the rise over the last two years nationwide. Nowhere has been spared from the scourge of gun violence. And I know that it is being felt very profoundly by families and communities right here in San Francisco, in this very neighborhood. Guns are flooding our streets. They're taking innocent lives. They're causing irreparable harm. And I want to be crystal clear. My office has filed hundreds of cases against people who are in unlawful possession of guns, against people who have used guns unlawfully. And we will continue to prosecute those cases. But we have learned the hard way that sometimes that's too little too late. This lawsuit will allow us to prevent the next gun crime from being committed, to prevent the next life from being lost. Look, over the past few years, we have seen a dramatic increase in the use of ghost guns. In 2019, for example, in San Francisco, ghost guns were associated with a tiny fraction of gun-related homicides. In 2020, ghost guns were associated with nearly 50 percent of gun-related homicides. We've seen a several thousand percent increase in just five years in the number of ghost guns that are being seized by police officers in this city. And across the country, we see California as the epicenter of the ghost gun problem. We couldn't be prouder to stand with this amazing team in this fight. So I want to take a moment to explain a little bit about how ghost guns work. And you can see here on this table the boxes, U.S. Postal Service boxes. And you can see the firearms, deadly weapons that were assembled, like Legos, like an IKEA set, from these boxes. These were shipped to investigators without any background check, without any verification that they were lawfully allowed to own a gun. And we watched as inspectors in my office assembled these deadly weapons, in one instance in under half an hour, and then test fired shots that could take the life of any human being. These boxes are being shipped all over California and all over the country, and the outcome is lethal. As we stand here today, I know we're all excited about the work that we're embarking on, about the potential to meaningfully enforce California's gun laws, to save lives, to prevent injuries and trauma and terror in our communities. We also have to be mindful of all the people whose lives have been touched by gun violence, of all the people in San Francisco and California and across the country whose lives will never be the same, whose families will never be whole because of the harm caused by firearms, by ghost guns, in too many instances. We have a serious challenge ahead of us, and with this all-star team, we have not only justice on our side, but we have the firepower to win. This lawsuit is a critical example of what it looks like when law enforcement and community and private partnerships form to prevent harm before it occurs. This is what proactive law enforcement looks like. We will not only respond after the damage is done, but we will take whatever steps are necessary and use any of the tools in our tool belt to prevent harm from occurring. Thank you so much, and it is an honor at this stage to introduce one of our partners, a lawyer who I have known for many years, who uh, it's a real pleasure to call a friend, and who it's been an inspiration to watch do so much of the heavy lifting in this litigation, an associate at the law firm Kecker and Van Nest, Travis Silva. Travis. Thank you, District Attorney Boudin. We at Kecker, Van Nest, and Peter are a private law firm here in San Francisco. We are very proud to partner with Attorney General Rob Bonta and District Attorney Boudin, their staffs, and our colleagues at the Giffords Law Center to bring this important lawsuit to protect public safety. Ghost guns are a problem in this state. Ghost guns are guns that are unserialized. They don't have a serial number on them. They are difficult to trace, if, if, if not impossible to trace, when law enforcement recover them uh, in connection with a crime. They are uh, purchased on the Internet. They are sent to the purchaser just through the regular mail. What you see in front of you here are three ghost guns and the actual boxes that they came in. 
The other feature of them that makes them so dangerous and their proliferation so extreme is the fact that they are assembled very easily. In some instances, in as little as, as half an hour. I'd like to ask Inspector Tejada of the District Attorney's Office to show this gun here purchased from MDX Arms, one of the defendants in our lawsuit. One of the inspectors at the District Attorney's Office was able to assemble this gun in less than half of an hour. And after it was done, he took it and he shot it and he showed that it worked. The gun next to that one, and it came in that envelope that, that Inspector Tejada has with him. That's a Glock style handgun and next to it is another Glock style handgun that is also a ghost gun that was also purchased by the District Attorney's Inspectors and, and, and built uh, in uh, just a very little amount of time. The third gun on the table, <clears throat> the third gun on the table is an AR style weapon. This is another ghost gun that is also unserialized. It takes a little bit more time to put together, but still not very much. The district attorney staff was able to assemble this in only a few hours. It of course is a larger uh, weapon and it's also a ghost gun. As the attorney general said, there's four legal theories in our case. One of them attacks the ghost gun industry's theory that these are not firearms. The ghost gun industry has taken the position that these are not firearms. If you look, just a common sense test tells you that that isn't true. All of these guns have been fired by law enforcement officers and they can shoot bullets. But legally the standard is, can you take the weapon and can you quickly, readily convert it into an object that can shoot a bullet? That's what has happened in, in each of these cases, showing that it, these are all firearms. Because that's true, the people who sell, the companies that sell these ghost guns have an obligation under federal law to conduct simple background checks to confirm that the people who are purchasing, purchasing these guns are eligible to possess them under federal and state law, and they fail to do that. That's one of the theories in our case. These weapons, the handguns, the two handguns that are further away from me, lack critical safety features that California law requires handguns, new handguns sold in this state to have. They don't have those. That's a violation of California law. The ghost gun manufacturers and, and retailers who sell these kits sell kits knowing that they lack the standards that are required under the law, and that's going to be an issue in our case as well. The serial number piece is an important one. As I mentioned, law enforcement officers who we've talked to in the course of putting this lawsuit together have stressed the importance of serial numbers as a critical tool. This is from ATF down to uh, local line uh, law enforcement in, in, in regular city and, and sheriff municipal departments. They need the, the serial numbers to conduct routine investigations where gun violence occurs. These weapons don't have them. And the law in California says that if someone is privately manufacturing these guns in their homes, they have to apply to the Department of Justice that Attorney General Bonta heads for uh, to, to obtain a serial number and, a, and put them on their weapons. The defendants in this lawsuit don't disclose that requirement to their consumers, but they still tell their consumers in some instances that these guns are legal in some instances that they're California compliant, and that's a violation of our consumer protection laws. And finally, as the Attorney General mentioned, two of the three defendants in this case are manufacturing these guns here in the state. They have an obligation to put a serial number on the guns when they do that. If they fail to do that, that's also a violation of the law. We're proud to partner with Attorney General Bonta and District Attorney Boudin as they bring this lawsuit. Their authority to do so is not new. Ghost guns are not new either. It takes courageous leadership to, to bring a case like this. We're proud to partner with our law enforcement leaders who are doing so, as well as to partner with the, the folks at the Giffords Law Center who have led on this issue in the courthouses and in state houses for a long time. And it's my privilege to introduce Esther Sanchez Gomez, litigation counsel at Giffords Law Center, to help put into context how our lawsuit fits in with California's broader efforts to stem the tide of gun violence in this state. Thanks, Travis. Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today. I'm Esther Sanchez Gomez. I'm a litigation attorney with the Giffords Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence, the legal arm of the gun safety organization led by former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. In August, my colleagues and I at the Giffords Law Center joined District Attorney Bodine and the team at Kecker Van Ness and Peters and filed a lawsuit to hold ghost gun manufacturers and retailers accountable for the harm they are causing our communities. And today, I'm glad to welcome Attorney General Bonta and his experienced team of attorneys to join us in demanding accountability on behalf of all Californians. 
The defendant companies have made it dangerously possible for anyone in California to buy all the parts they need to build an untraceable gun. They can buy this ghost gun, no questions asked, and have it shipped to their door. The kit arrives conveniently packaged with the instructions and tools needed to build it in a casual afternoon. The ease with which these guns can be purchased and assembled has made them unsettlingly ubiquitous and tremendously profitable. Over the last couple of decades, California has made significant efforts to address gun violence. These efforts include regulating the dealers and manufacturers who supply legal traceable firearms to protect against gun trafficking and violence. More recently, California has also made critical direct investments in community safety, funding programs that interrupt cycles of shootings and retaliation, and promote peace and community trust. Today, California inarguably leads the nation in gun violence prevention efforts. And thanks to the effectiveness of these measures, our state's gun deaths rates have fallen significantly over the past 20 years. But these made-at-home guns are being used to kill, and the manufacturers and sellers named in our lawsuit know it. The danger of making untraceable firearm parts and kits so freely available on the internet is obvious. Ghost guns have been recovered from gun trafficking rings and have been used in mass shootings and violence linked to domestic terrorism and white supremacists. And they are contributing to murders, especially of young black and brown men in neighborhoods that are already experiencing unacceptable rates of violence. Put simply, ghost guns pose an existential threat to California's progress fighting gun violence. In the face of this, the companies selling the parts to build ghost guns have doubled down on their unscrupulous illegal business practices. Their websites and advertising tout the speed with which these guns can be assembled. They promote the fact that no background check is involved in purchasing their products. Consumers are told that these products are 100% legal or California compliant. Meanwhile, these customers have been the ones who risk prosecution if they are found not to be legally possessing the firearm they assembled. There's a disconnect here that ghost gun sellers are exploiting to the detriment of consumers and their communities. The consequences are severe, including more gun violence and more people prosecuted for violating the laws that these manufacturers and sellers have unfairly given themselves permission to ignore. The defending companies are flouting the law and basic corporate responsibility by flooding California with unregulated and unsafe firearms. Our lawsuit is a simple aim preventing the violence carried out with ghost guns and holding responsible the companies who are profiting from it. That's why I'm thankful to Attorney General Bonta for joining us in this important fight to save lives. Before I step away, I'd like to briefly recognize the critical contributions of frontline community leaders who are directly impacted by the ghost gun crisis and working tirelessly to prevent gun violence. Thank you, and I'll turn the floor to Maddie Scott, the founder of Mothers in Charge and president of Brady United Against Gun Violence. This is, my name is Maddie Scott, and I'm honored to be here today. It's a little difficult for me right now looking at that weapon over there, the second one, the Glock. Because as I look at it, that's the weapon that took my son's life. When I look at that. I'm here because I'm a black mother who lost my youngest son, George C. Scott, at age 24 to census gun violence. He was killed while attending a graduation party here in San Francisco. George's sons, Gabriel and Karan, was a year and a half and five at the time they lost their father. I had to tell my grandson the next day, July 17th, my son was killed on July 17th, the next day, July 18th, was my grandson's sixth birthday. And I had to be the one to tell him on his birthday that your father died. I couldn't tell him how his father died. I had to tell him that his father died on his birthday. And the scream, the scream, the scream I heard on that phone from my six-year-old grandson is the scream that wakes me up every day to do this work. It's a scream that I don't want any of you 
or any mother or grandmother, anyone to ever have to hear a scream like that from a six-year-old after telling him his father died and it was because of gun violence. Every day, guns take countless lives of black and brown in our communities. These are our sons, our daughters, our mothers, our sisters, who we will never get back. Goats Guns has magnified the problem. As we see in Oakland, 102 mothers and fathers will be going to the cemetery instead of going to a graduation. Ghost Guns have only magnified they are cheap, deadly, and readily accessible. They usually fall into the hands of people who can't legally buy guns, including our children, maybe your children. Anybody can go online and get a gun. Anybody can purchase a gun. We need to get these deadly, unregulated weapons out of our community, and we need to do it in a way that doesn't fuel mass incarceration and injustice in our broken criminal just us system. We cannot simply arrest and prosecute our way out of gun violence. The lawsuits gets at the source of the gun violence without harming the communities most impacted by gun violence, which is my communities, communities like ours. I commend Attorney General Bonta and District Attorney Bodine for taking on corporations that flood our streets with daily unregulated, unregulated guns. I want to thank also our Governor Gavin Newsom and Assemblyman Kevin McCartney, who just signed AB 1191, which requires DOJ to report any type of guns and analyze the trace data and submit it to legislation. We have a lot of work to do. 25 years ago, I didn't have an attorney general at my side. 25 years ago, I didn't have a DA at my side. 25 years ago, I didn't have anyone at my side. It was just us, us mothers, like Liz Torres, who lost both of her sons to gun violence. Two, can you imagine that? She buried two sons. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Not my worst enemy, not anyone. America, this is an epidemic that has gotten out of hand, but thank God here in San Francisco, we have our DA. In California, we have our Attorney General. We have Governor Gavin Newsom. We have our Mayor London Breed. And then we have someone representing us in D.C., and that's our Congressional Leader, Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. So we're on the move, California, because this is about all of us and none of us. We must stop the killing and start the healing. Education should be key right now. We should be buying books for our children, educating them with laptops, instead of we going to funerals because why? Guns in our community, it's an epidemic that is wiping us out. 102 in Oakland, 56 here in San Francisco. I just left Philadelphia. It's now 415, 415 black and brown mothers lost their children, and we're not even in the holiday season yet. So I'm glad today. I'm glad today because here we have a team. We have a team of people that cares. Halloween coming up. My son would have been 48. He's not here. He's not here. It's difficult. I just had a granddaughter, a great granddaughter. He's not here to hold his grandbaby. So I pray, I pray every day that we wake up, that we get up, and that we do what we're supposed to do. And I just want to thank Root and United Players for helping us every year to get guns off our street with the gun buybacks. And his team, his commitment, his dedication, and the work they do to keeping kids safe. So I urge you, and I thank you, all of you, for what you're doing. It means a lot. We're going to stop the killing. We're going to start the healing. Because this, as I say, is about all of us or none of us. Christmas is coming. We should be able to go shopping without having to look over our shoulders. We shouldn't be in fear to go to the movies. Our children shouldn't have to have drills in the classrooms. America, we got to stop it. It's time. It's time.
And right now, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Rebecca Pelvin, MD and Professor of Surgery, Critical Care at Zuckerberg General Hospital, and the Director of San Francisco Wraparound Project, who works with my good friend, Dr. Andrew Campbell. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you to DA Boudin and AG Bonta for the opportunity to speak today. I'm Dr. Rebecca Plevin. I'm a trauma surgeon and ICU doctor at UCSF and Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital. As a trauma surgeon, I see the impact of gun violence every single day. I see the wounds that take years to heal, if they ever do, the families who are torn apart, and the lives that are forever changed. I'm also the director of, of the Wraparound Project, a violence intervention program based at Zuckerberg San Francisco General Hospital that starts at the patient's bedside. At Wraparound, we work to end gun violence by addressing its root causes, the structural racism and deep-seated social disparities that put members of our community at risk of gun violence. The Wraparound team sees the effects of gun violence every single day. Last year, the National Rifle Association told American doctors to stay in our lane and not talk about gun violence. Doctors nationwide responded that gun violence is not only our lane, it's our road, it's our thoroughfare, and it's our highway. And I'd I would like to add that gun violence is a public health crisis, and the doctors, frontline workers, and affected community members who know victims of gun violence and care for victims of gun violence have the right of way in this discussion. I want us to move the needle towards gun ownership that is responsible, regulated, and safe. The presence of ghost guns in our cities take us so much further from that goal. I'm grateful to the San Francisco District Attorney for making the safety of our city a priority and to Attorney General Bonta for adding his voice and the power of his office to this litigation that will keep ghost guns out of our communities. I will keep working in the operating room and at the hospital to treat victims of gun violence. I'm grateful that you, DA Boudin, and Attorney General Bonta are working in the courtroom. I hope that your work means that I will work a little less that we'll have fewer gunshot victims to treat, that we'll have fewer families to comfort. Together, let's end gun violence. Thank you. And I'd like to invite Attorney General Bonta back to the podium for questions. Thank you. Well, let me just say thank you to this uh, powerful uh, team for coming together on this important issue to keep our community safe, uh, to fight back against ghost guns and um, to use the tools that we have um, to, to make our community safer and, and um, to fight back. So just very appreciative of this team, proud to be part of it. And with that, we're happy to take any questions. If you want to ask a question of a specific person that's not me, uh, please specify and uh, we'll have them come to the podium. Yes. Uh, the lawsuit uh, asks the manufacturers to put serial numbers on in the background checks. Does it have any sort of uh, retroactive attempt to gather up any leads that are out there? Well, we're, we're looking at injunctive relief, stopping the practices, making sure that from a consumer protection perspective uh, that the, the unfair, unlawful, fraudulent, deceptive practices of these manufacturers who are suggesting that they're, what they're selling is legal and compliant with California law, that that stops. So we're going to be as aggressive as we can with our legal theories uh, to keep people safe, uh, but that's what we're focusing on right now, the ending the practices uh, going forward, including injunctive relief. Well, 
Well, I mean, if we can, if, if there is an opportunity to follow the trail to unlawful um, sale of, of the guns and we can get them off the street to keep people safe, then certainly that's something we have an interest in. And anything that's common sense, legal, uh, you know, consistent with the facts to get guns off the street that are unsafe for folks. And, you know, ghost guns, we know, are an epidemic right now. We're seeing children, we're seeing community members, we're seeing law enforcement officers trying to keep us safe being killed by ghost guns because of their unregulated nature. And this is a, um, a, a really powerful approach, novel um, and unique in, in, in its um, uh, framing to get the ghost guns off our street. We're seeking uh, everything that we have uh, available to us, penalties, uh, damages, injunctive relief, ending of the practices, uh, you know, financial uh, damages for what's been done in the past. So uh, we're throwing the whole kitchen sink at them based on the law and the facts. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you all being here. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maddie. Thank Powerful you. words, inspirational, what we're doing every day. Yeah. 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 Yeah.